Here's my problem. A parking lot is completely full. Completely full. My parking lot is completely full except for 24 empty spots. There's 19 rows of parking. There's 14 parking spots in each row. So right off the bat, what I'm thinking in my head is, okay, I'm thinking, okay, there's a parking lot. It's got 19 rows. Oops, 19 rows. It's got 19 rows across. There's 14. So I'm thinking, well, it's 19 by 14 because there's 14 across in each row. And there's 19 of them. So I'm thinking 14 times 19. So I'll come back to that in a sec. Because what I want to know here is what do I know? Well, I just showed that. I've got 19 rows. I've got 14 cars per row. But there's one other piece of information I've got in here that's really important. What's that? The 24 empty spots. Okay. It said except 24. So when I see that word except, what I'm thinking is in my mind is that I'm going to need subtraction. And then the other one is multiplication. A strategy that I could use that some people have used here is they've drawn a picture. I've drawn a picture. It's not a very detailed one, but I'm trying to be efficient. So I don't need to draw every single parking spot. I just know. What if you just put multiplication on it? If you just put multiplication on this, that's fine. But you're not, nobody is just doing multiplication here. You're, you're making a picture in your mind. That's your strategy. The operations you're going to use are subtraction and multiplying. So it's a little bit of a complex problem. So what is, what information do I not need? Okay, I, you know, stuff, some of the details, like it's a parking lot, maybe I, I don't need that detail as much. You don't need the word uh, of or in. There's a lot of words I don't need, exactly. What does the problem want me to find out? How many cars are there in total? Okay, now this is really, really important here. Because I sent a few papers back with people. How many cars? Now, what's the unit? Cars is the unit. If you get a word problem, there's always a unit. You need to include what the unit is. So you're always counting or trying to calculate something. So tell us what it is when you're done. So that's why that's important. All right, so let's go back here. I had 14 times 19. Now, again, I'm doing mental math in my head. I'm thinking, okay, well, 19 is pretty close to 20. 20 times 14, that's just doubling 14 is 280. And, but I've got to take one less 14 because I, I didn't have 20 14s. I had 19 of them. So I got to take one less 14 out of that. And that gives me 266 total spots. Yes. Now here's the problem though. I'm not done. Minus, minus I have to minus the 24 empty spots and I'm going to get 242. Now, I'm not done. I'm not done because I need a sentence. A sentence that answers the question. There are 242. What was my units? 242 cars in the lot. All right. Good. That's a good solution. Okay. Using arrays is like using your base 10 blocks. So if you think about it, it's not that complicated. If you had a question like 6 times 12, you can show this by knowing that this is the same thing as 6 times 10 plus 6 times 2. All I've done is I've taken the 2 in the 1's column out and I've taken the 10 out of the tens columns out, and I can very quickly, and this is how I add or subtract or multiply or divide in my head all the time by breaking things up into their place value. If I see 60 times 3, I just automatically think, well, that's 3 times 60 plus 2 times 60. All right? So in this case, same thing. So 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 2 
is 12, and the answer is going to be 72. So if you were to show that in arrays, you could see that this is 6 times 10, and this here is 2 times 6. This is going to be very important for us to understand later on when we do area and perimeter, because when we do area, we're always multiplying the length times the width. And that's how we find out how much room is inside of something. So this is a pretty straightforward diagram here of how you could show 6 times 12 using an array. Now, expanded form, which many of us know how to do, is demonstrated for us over here. What has this person done? Well, they've done 4. What they've shown us here is 4 times 20 which is equal to 80, and then they've done 4 times 7, which is equal to 28, which is equal to 28. and 80 and 28 is 108. And they've done a similar thing over here. They've just shown that 20 plus 7, so we've multiplied the 4 times the 7, they've multiplied the 4 times the 20, 80 and 28. So there's a couple of different ways to think about it. There's no one way to multiply things. I personally tend to do it like this because I find it's much easier to do mental math quickly in my head without having to use a calculator or write anything down. But what it requires is you got to sort of keep track of two equations in your head at the same time. So it gets a little bit tricky. Now if I was to, before I was even to do this, here's what I would probably also do if this was money. I would think to myself, okay, well, let's say that's 30, that's pretty close to $30. I would estimate I go, okay, well, 30 times 4, it's going to be about a, it's going to be, my answer is going to be a little bit less than 120. Mm -hmm. And of course it is, it's 108. So use those, use those estimating strategies where you just round something off. The other way you could probably do this, you could do like, you could use a 5, although it's getting a little bit out. You could do 5 times 30 quickly in your head if you're more comfortable with 5s. But doing 4 times 30, that's not difficult. All right, good stuff.